Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. It's been a while since I did this two-tier PKI lab with CDP and OCSP, and now it's actually time to renew the issuing CA certificate. I was thinking it was going to be a breeze, but then I started pondering about OCSP, and sure enough, there is some mitigation that you have to consider when you're updating your issuing CA certificate if you're using OCSP. So we're going to renew our issuing CA certificate and mitigate OCSP. Look in the description for the links down below and you can actually find my GitHub site where I have all the code snippets for building out your own two-tier PKI lab from start to finish. It's been a popular demand. I get a lot of emails requesting it, so I went ahead and put it all up on GitHub. So check it out. Okay, our cast of characters today starts out with Tucson ICA1. That's our issuing CA certificate server. And you look here in PKI view, everything's just great. Now I just pitched this up yesterday, so I've got yesterday's date for my CA certificates. Let's go into Certificate Authority, and we're going to begin the process of renewing the issuing CA certificate. All right. Right-click on the Certificate Authority and say Renew CA Certificate. It stops the service. Now here we can either generate a new signing key or continue to use the old signing key. I'm going to continue using the old signing key in this instance because none of those three conditions applies in my situation and the mitigation in OCSP is different. I have to think that, about that a little bit more. So I'm going to click OK to no new signing key. Now here, it's an offline root CA, so we want to hit cancel. There we go. And it restarts the service, so my issuing CA is running right now. I'm going to go retrieve that new request. Anytime I'm looking at these file folders, it's really nice to actually sort that view by date. So you can see yesterday's certificates and requests, etc. And here's today's request. I'm going to copy this. And back to our next cast of characters is Tucson RCA1. This is the root CA server. I'm just going to paste this in C, Windows, System32, Cert Serve, Cert Unroll on Tucson RCA1. Again, sorting by date's really handy. Now on the root CA, we are going to submit a new request. We find our new certificate request from Tucson ICA1. Notice how the dates come in handy here. We have a pending request, and we are going to say go ahead and issue that. It's nice to note the request ID number in case you have a lot of certificates to ferret through to find the certificate that you want. So I'm opening that certificate, going to the details page, file, export. Let's give it a name. That was yesterday's certificate. I'm going to go ahead and append the date to it here. Let's put a little underbar in the middle there for clarity. Okay, so we've exported that new issuing CA certificate. We just need to go retrieve it from the file system. There it is. Again, sorting by date in a detailed explorer view is helpful. Putting dates on your files is helpful. I don't know why they hide file extensions for known file types. I want to see all of the file types. There we go. So we're copying that certificate back to Tucson ICA1. You'll have to watch the original lab video to understand the drive letters, etc. Again, I want to turn off the hide file extensions for known file types. Sorting by date, and you can see it's a lot clearer here. There's my new certificate to install on my CA. Install CA certificate in Certificate Authority. It stops the service. You want to make sure the service starts again. We had a little blowback from that. Here you want to look for the file type CER. And there's our file with today's date. And I'm sorting by date just to make sure we're getting the right one. Okay, so it has 
installed the new CA certificate. Now we have to deal with our web server that's hosting CDP and OCSP. We want to make sure the new certificate and CRLs are already there. So we're going to go into Windows, System32, Cert Serve, Cert Enroll. Again, sorting by date to make sure we get all the good stuff that we just generated so you can see a certificate revocation list, the Delta, and the new issuing CA certificate. We're going to copy all of those. Now, if you watch my previous video, you'll also see that those certificate revocation lists are automatically transferred to Tucson WWW1. And we're logging into that server now. Yeah. You see there the date on the certificate revocation list is today's date. So when I installed the certificate, the new CRLs were copied over automatically. So watch my previous video to get a handle on that. But we are going to paste the new CA certificate. So here I'm going to skip the certificate revocation list files. And there's the new issuing CA certificate on the CDP OCSP www server so let's look in pki view on tucson ica1 refreshing that uh-oh ocsp shows up good but the aia location says unable to download now this can be a puzzling error and remember i'm just pitching up this lab like within a matter of an hour to two hours and there's some steps that you want to consider because if you look in Active Directory in the user's container, there's this default group called Cert Publishers. And by default, when you have an Active Directory-based certificate service, it winds up installing the issuing CA in this group. Yeah, there's Cert Publishers. And you can see Tucson ICA is in that group. But if I haven't rebooted Tucson ICA1 since it was put in that group, it wouldn't have the token of that group membership. And so perhaps it wouldn't have the permissions to read that new certificate. That's my guess here. That's why I rebooted Tucson ICA1. So let's look at this article about mitigating CA certificate renewals when you have OCSP. So basically, when you're renewing the certificate, you're changing the signing key of the CA, and this affects the ability of the OCSP server to obtain an OCSP response signing certificate. Here, after the CA key is renewed, the CA is using a new key to sign their certificates, and the period between the old CA certificate and the new CA certificate expiration the OCSP response signing certificate can't be issued. So we're going to run this command, cert util set reg CA, use defined CA cert in request, and set it to one. I'm gonna copy that. And let's get on Tucson ICA1. We're gonna open PowerShell as an administrator. Let's go ahead and paste that command. There, we see it was successful. We need to restart the cert service. So in PowerShell, restart service, cert SVC. And for fun, let's just go into regedit and see where that value was added. H key local machine. System, current control set, services, and we're looking for cert service. Under that, you want to look up configuration. You go into the CA name here, and you see all the settings for that certificate authority. And down at the bottom here is that use defined CA. Yeah, use defined CA cert in request, and that's set to 1. So that's how you mitigate renewing your issuing CA certificate in OCSP. 
Now, if you need to renew your CA certificate with a new key pair, then you have to set up a new revocation configuration in OCSP. Here we can look at OCSP on Tucson WWW1 and the OCSP service is still working. Yeah, here in OCSP, you actually see that's the old issuing CA certificate. I'm going to have to turn around and check it later in a couple of weeks once that certificate has expired. Okay, so now here you see on Tucson ICA1 that we've cleared up that error on the AIA location number one. So everything looks good in PKI view and I'm going to call it mission accomplished at this point. Like I say, I'm going to continue to monitor OCSP over the course of the next two weeks to see what happens when the OCSP signing certificate expires. Make sure to look in the description down below for all the links. Leave a comment, give this video a like, and before you go on to watch more of my PKI videos, make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much.